Hi, and welcome to Galaxy Advisors. The purpose of this video is to explore Conjure's basic process steps. It all begins with your area of interest. What are you interested in? Are a particular person, um, a product, a service, a website? Uh, the main thing is to think, first of all, well, what are you interested? What would you like to explore with this uh, Conjure software tool? Conjure's basic process step, there's really three. Uh, on the menu, you're going to find uh, Tools, File, and View. You're going to use the Tools uh, menu for data harvesting. For each uh, of the tools that are possible to use, you're going to create a database, and then your searches are going to be, and those search results will be stored in a particular database. Now, a database can have more than one data set, but fundamentally, you begin with the tools for the data harvesting. Next, you're going to use the file menu command to open the database of your choosing. And then uh, you're going to use the view uh, menu to visualize and measure. So these are the three basic processing steps that you're going to be uh, doing and redoing over and over. depends on different area of interest that you have. So tools for data harvesting, file to open that particular database, and view to visualize and measure. So let's take an um, example of that. Here in Condor, just as a reminder for starting Condor, to start Condor, double click on the file of the Condor jar and it will begin. And after a little delay, um, you're going to enter your key, your monthly key, if you haven't done it. You only need to enter it once a month at the very first day of the month. The local host will remain local host, user is root. And the password, it depends if you created a MySQL password then you need to enter it in. If you didn't, then simply leave it blank and press OK. Uh, then the Condor menu will begin and start. Here is the major console of Condor, what it looks like. Now there's a Mac version, which has a little different aesthetics um, than the PC, but the two are identical. So here's the Mac version of what it will look like on a Mac. And here's uh, the PC version of what um, Condor will look like on the PC. They have the identical uh, functionality. It's just a little different uh, visual representation um, of the screens. So I'm going to use uh, now to explore the Condor tools. So here's the menu, the basic console menu, as you see going across. Um, tools is really where you begin. You use the tools for your David harvesting from the web, uh, your email, uh, Wikipedia, Twitter, Facebook, videos, and more. So tools is where you start. Next, you're going to use file to open the data that you save from your particular harvesting um, activity. And then finally, you're going to use the view command to visualize and measure um, those networks. And it's really in the view that has the most sophistication and you'll be spending most of your time. But that, again, is the really the fundamental process steps. So let's take a look at those. If you look, click on the Tools menu, you're going to see a very long list of possible tools for data harvesting. Let's take, for example, the web. Each one of those tools will have a form. Here's the one for the web collection. An example in the upper left corner, you'll see database. You're going to first step will be to create new. You enter a database name, a particular, there's no spaces or special characters when you enter that. And then finally, once you have that, you're going to click uh, OK. So the data from your search is going to be stored in the MySQL um, database of the name that you gave. Now for uh, mail, here's the form uh, that is used to uh, retrieve um, your email for analysis. Uh, here's a form for Twitter um, that you have a number of different um, parameters that you can put in for the query. For Facebook, uh, Facebook Fetcher. And for Wikipedia, there are several. There's Wiki Search, which is actually a two-step process. You use Wiki Fetcher to fetch articles um, that are associated with the topic that you have. And then after you collect those um, articles and external web links, you can actually use a series of up to 10 different ways to rate those notes. There's Wiki Evolution if you want to look at the evolution of, uh, of an article or a topic in Wikipedia. 
uh, and um, determine and watch its development over time of what links were added to other articles in Wikipedia. Wiki Evolution will do that. And there's also a Wiki Fact Fetcher. There is um, a conjure tool called video that basically you're going to search the internet for videos on your particular uh, topic. So in sum, the tools are used for data harvesting from the web to mail, Wikipedia, Twitter, Facebook, video, and more. The second step again is you're going to open file open database and to use that particular database to view it. So here uh, is an example of file. If you click on file, uh, you'll have a drop down menu. Click on open database. You'll see a little window open. I circled in green a little drop down window which will list out the multiple databases that you have available for you. And then once you do that, click um, OK. In this particular one, I've opened um, a, a small Enron email data set to give you a little example of the viewing options. Now in view, this is really where you're going to spend the majority of your time because it's the most sophisticated, has an enormous number of options, and it might be a little overwhelming for somebody at first, but this little basic video is going to give you a few um, uh, clicks and a few steps through it that will make it easy uh, as an initial step for you to explore your data. So if we click on view, I've already entered and opened the Enron um, data set. You're going to see, well, how do I view, view this data? Uh, there's really in view, there's two primary steps. You're going to click on view, then communication, and then you're going to create a communication view, which from the first step. And the second step, you're either going to create a static or a dynamic. A static is this, I'm not going to see a movie, I'm just going to take all the uh, nodes and links at one time and visualize it in a static uh, map. To see a dynamic of say email, Twitter and other databases that you have, you click on the dynamic view. So I'll give you a little example. So here, the first step under view was to create, click view communication, then create communication views. That will open up this create communication views uh, another window with a number of options. For example, with email, you might say, well, I don't want to look at all the email. I just want to look at it from this date to this date. So you can check time, set time constraints. A window then will open and you can pick the time. You might say, I only want to look at the email that has this particular terms in it or terms in it. And so you can uh, select the email by content if you wish. You can also use this to refine an actress in the case of email. For example, I have a Gmail address. I have a, I have a university address. I have a Mac address. You know, I, people have more than one email. And you could say, well, you know, I want to make sure that this person or actor, all their different various email addresses are consolidated into one. So you can use that. So a lot of options here. Uh, next, the second step is to create a dy uh, choice between a dynamic or static or other view. In this case, I'm going to create a dynamic view of this email communication. So I've selected a time unit of month. There's actually um, day, month, and year available. You can do it with or without history and so on. So the second step here at major after you created the communication view is set the dynamic control. And then a couple more windows are open about how you want to wait it. You can choose plain or no. There's various options for waiting. And another window will open and asking if you want to select top notes by their betweenness. In this particular case, we have 621 um, nodes. And I've not selected. I could have checked that box and selected, say, the top 50, top 100, and so on. I just want to say, no, I'm going to look at all of those nodes here. So for very large networks, maybe in the thousands, you might want to say, boy, is this going to be too much of a, a blur there with all those uh, nodes? And so this gives you more ability to filter and refine your network view. So ultimately here, after making those choices, the map is going to be viewed. This is actually an animation of the various times. And I played it uh, for to about um, around 20 months or so. You can see on the cursor at the below. Now, 
at this point, this is where you're going to spend a significant portion of your time because this menu now, we have a new menu just for this database and gives you a lot of ability to filter and refine your view. Here in the upper left now, uh, for the dynamic view of the Enron email, in this case, you're going to have a control, a bipartite, a view, and a measure, and a play animation uh, button as well. If we look under measure, you can say, whoa, here is a long list of other combinations uh, that you can measure There's network. A couple of my favorite are the ATRA contribution index to see who's contributed the most in this email network. The group centrality and group density is also a good um, favorite of mine. And also a new user plot to get an idea of when people came into this network for the first time. Under the view, there's a lot of uh, cases. I can color these nodes. I can reside them. I can draw with and without edges. I can filter the nodes again. I can zoom. I can show labels. There's lots of, you can see, uh, sophistication here in refining your map. You can actually recode the map automatically by term or by domain. Um, often in um, analysis, you might have government domains, education domains, business domains, and this will automatically re-aggregate uh, the email in this case or others by a particular domain. You if you have more than one data set in your database, you can select those. You can select re select a new layout by link or term by a particular attribute. Again, you can pretty much see with the in the dynamic view, measure, view, bipartite, and control, lots of options. And here's an example of the Enron email. Um, and I've displayed at the lower beneath it the group centrality plots. In the upper right corner, I have the contribution index. In the lower right, the new user plots. So if you move that slider, all of these will dynamically move and readjust um, um, all at once to get a real feel for what's going on in this network at any particular point in time. So in sum, the basic process steps that you use and reuse over and over are to use the tools for the data harvesting into a particular database, use the file command to open that database, and then you'll be spending most of your time using the view, view to visualize and measure um, your network. And ultimately, Condor tools are used to explore your particular area of interest. It then takes that area of interest into network maps, provides you with measures of trends, and as well as the ability for content analysis. Uh, Condor tools enable you a combined perspective across these, uh, which is really a powerful way to analyze your area of interest. Overall, the Condor system architecture might say looks like this. Uh, Condor is uh, that software that has these various of tools or web forms that allow you to collect uh, the data from the web, uh, email, Wikipedia, Twitter, Facebook, video, and more. It's all stored on your computer in a MySQL database. And then you can use the Navicat, which is a graphical user interface software, to query that database and actually see um, those uh, tables and variables. Ultimately, Condor takes the output, is uh, dynamic or static views of it. Uh, you can map not only the uh, network connections, but the content that's in, say, for example, uh, email. You can get different uh, network statistics dynamically all at one time. So here's a, a good example if you wanted to use the Navicat software. This is a, a Navicat view of the Enron uh, database showing the various tables that exist below it. And I also did a screenshot of the chars of the data set I did, the mail address, the organization, and so on that's available. So uh, Condor provides um, all of that. And I uh, just want to again uh, thank you and to I hope you enjoy exploring um, your uh, data set with the Condor tool.